this particular session we will talk about the understanding the global organization design and in understanding the global organization design we will talk about the entering the global uh, area uh, then the motivational for the global uh, expansion then the stages of the international development the instructional global organization design and the here J Gilbert's star model holonic enterprise model the flexible organization model uh, the significance of the global organization structures, benefits of the global organization structures and as usual we will be discussing the case study, research papers, book recommendations and the references. Now whenever we are talking about entering into the global area, why has the global experience at the top become so important to the organization? Only a few decades ago many companies uh, could afford to ignore uh, the international environment. Today, the number of the companies uh, doing the business on a global scale is increasing and the awareness of the national borders increasing as reflected in the frequency of the foreign participation at the top management level is there. So, here the 14th of these uh, fortune 100 companies uh, are now run by the foreign bond CEOs. This uh, city group picked the uh, India bond Vikram as Pandit as its CEO. Alco's top leader was born in Morocco and the Dow Chemicals is headed by a, a native Australian. The trend is seen in other countries as well because the world is rapidly developing into a unified global field and companies need to the top leaders who have a global outlook. Extraordinary advancements in the communication, technology and transportation have created a new highly competitive landscape. The products can be made and sold anywhere in the world. Communications are instant and the product development life cycles are the growing shorter. No company is uh, uh, isolated from the global influence. Some large so called uh, American companies such as the Coca Cola, IBM, McDonald and Procter & Gamble rely on the international sales for a substantial portion of their sales and profits. The economic technology and competitive forces have combined to push uh, many companies from a domestic to a global focus. The importance of the global environment for the today's organizations is reflected in the shifting global economy. As one indication Fortune magazines the list of the global 500. The world's 500 largest companies by revenues indicates the economic clout is the being diffused across a broad global scale. In general, uh, three primary factors motivate companies to expand uh, internationally. Economic of sales, economies of scope and low cost production factors are there. Economies of scales building a global uh, presence uh, expands in the organization's scale of operations, enabling it to the realize the economies of the scales. The trend towards the large organizations was initially the sparked by the industrial revolution which created the pressure in many industries for the larger factories that could seize the benefits of economies of scale um, offered by the new technologies and production methods. Through large volume production, uh, these industrial giants were able to achieve the lowest possible uh, the cost uh, that is uh, per unit of production. However, for many companies domestic markets no longer provide the high level of the uh, sales needed to maintain the enough volume to achieve the scale economies in an industry such as the automobile manufacturing for example. A company would need a, a tremendous share of the domestic market to achieve the scale economies are there. A second factor is the enhanced potential for the exploiting uh, the economies of the scope. Uh, scope refers to the number and the variety of products and the services and company offers as well as the number and the variety of the uh, 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 regions, countries and the markets itself. Having F presence in the multiple countries uh, provided the marketing power and their uh, synergy companies to the same R, uh, uh, size uh, firm that he has presence to in the fewer countries. Economies of the scope that can increase a company's market power as compared to the uh, competitors uh, because the company develops uh, uh, the, uh, the broad knowledge of the culture, social, economic and uh, other factors that affect uh, customers in the varied location and can provide uh, uh, specialized products and services to meet those needs. For example, an uh, uh, advertising agency with a presence in the several global uh, markets uh, gains a competitive edge serving, a, serving the large companies uh, that span the globe or considers the case of the McDonald which uh, has to obtain nearly identical um, the ketchup and sauce packets for its restaurants around the world. 
the low cost production factors are there. Uh, the, the third major force motivating the global expansion uh, relates to the factors of the productions. Uh, one of these earliest uh, mm, uh, and still one of the most powerful motivation for the US companies to invest abroad is the opportunity to the obtain the raw materials, labor and the other resources at the lowest possible uh, cost. Organizations have long term the overseas to secure the, the raw materials uh, that were scare, scare or unable in their home country. Uh, many companies also turn to other countries as a source of the cheap labor is there. Textile manufacturing uh, in the United States uh, in now practically uh, non-existence or the companies have shifted uh, most production to Asia, Mexico, Latin America and the calibration where the cost of the labor and the supplies are the must lower. Aerospace related companies are the building factors in Mexico where they get uh, the cheaper labor and favorable government uh, regulations. US markets of the toys, consumer electronics and the other goods outsource work to the China and the other low wage countries are there. In the stages of the international development, a strategic orientation is there, domestically uh, oriented, international export oriented, uh, multi domestic companies, then the multinational and the global is there. When we series of development initial the foreign in, in here the involvement is there then the competitive positioning is there in this uh, international and then the explosion and the global is there. When we talk about these uh, the structure is there then domestic structure plus the export uh, uh, department is there. The domestic structure uh, and the international division that will be the international part will be there. When the multinational is there in the multinational worldwide the geographic products are there. When we talk about the global, then the metric transactional is there. When we talk about the market potential, so it becomes the moderate, mostly domestic, large multinational and in the case of the multinational, it is very large multinationals are there which is becoming the whole world for this, but the global is concerned. So, no company can become a global giant uh, overnight. Uh, managers have to consciously adopt a strategy for the global development and the growth and the growth. Organizations enter the foreign markets in a variety of ways and follow the diverse paths. So, however, the shift from the domestic to the global typically secures through uh, these stages of the development are there. In stage 1, the domestic stage, uh, the company is domestically oriented, but managers are aware of the global environment and may want to consider initial foreign involvement to expand production volume and the realize economies of scales. The market potential is limited and is primarily in the home country. The structure of the company is domestic, typically functional or the divisional and initial foreign sales are the handled through and the export department. The details of the freight forwarding, customer problems and the foreign exchange are handled by the outside are there. In stage 2, the international stage, the company takes the uh, export seriously and begins to think uh, multi domestically. So, multi domestic means competitive issues uh, in each uh, country are the independent of the other countries. The company deals with the each country individually. The concern is with the international competitive positioning uh, uh, compared with the other firms in the industry. As this point at the international division has replaced the export department and specialized are hired to handle the sales, service and warehousing abroad. The multiple countries are identified as the potential market. For example, the, uh, the Purefil, a small company with headquarters uh, in the uh, Doraville, Georgia sells air filters that remove the pollution and clears uh, the air in the 50 different countries. Although uh, the Purefil is small, it maintains the contacts with the independent sales firms in the various countries who know the local markets and the cultures are there. In stage 3, the multinational stage, uh, the company has exp uh, the extensive experience uh, in a number of international markets and has established the marketing, manufacturing, other research and development. Uh, the facilities in foreign countries. The organization obtains a large percentage of the revenues from the sales outside the home country. Explosive growth occurs and international operations take off and the company has a business uh, uh, that units uh, scattered around the world along with the suppliers, manufacturers and the distributors. Examples of companies in the multinational include the, uh, the Siemens of Germany, uh, Sony of Japan and Coca-Cola of the United States, Walmart. Uh, although 
although it is the world's the biggest company, it is just moving into the multinational stage with only about 22 percent of sales from the international business in the fiscal year 2006. The fourth and the ultimate stage is the global stage, which means the company uh, transits in any stage country, the business uh, not merely a collection of the domestic industries, uh, rather subsidiaries are interlinked to the point where the competitors uh, uh, position in the one country significantly influence the activities in the other countries. So, 20 truly global companies no longer uh, think of these themselves as having a single home uh, country and indeed have been called uh, their stateless corporations. Uh, this represents a new and dramatic evolution from the multinational company of the 1960s and 1970s. For example, the CEO of digital media company Thomson SSA says he does not want people to think of the company as being the based in any particular places there. So, global organization designs is the only man man management system uh, that links all aspects of the business to ensure the right organization structure, the right people, the right accountabilities, the right leadership practices, the right processes and the procedures are there. So, uh, here implementation global organization design has led to the increased profits, growth, cost reduction and the increased productivity and the market share is there. So, this improves the customer relations. So, greater employee satisfaction and the retention will be there. Global organization design does uh, this by ensuring uh, the optimal number of layers in the structure and the well understood uh, cross functional relationships. Clear roles, accountabilities and the authorities, leadership roles and practices that help managers to become the effective leaders and the employees to use their full global organization design does this by the ensuring uh, the fair performance management and the compensation systems. Assessment methods and a, a talent and system that identifies the best people for hiring and promotions and supports the effective career development and the succession planning is there. When we are talking about the Tesla organization structure, here we find that is Tesla is characterized by a functional organization structure with aspects of a hierarchy structure. Uh, we have discussed this thing into these uh, organization structures, horizontal structures, vertical structures, right? And here we find it is the functional structure is there, means the division of these uh, departments is on the basis of the functions. Tesla does employ functional centers that cover all business activities, including the finance, sales, marketing, technologies, engineers, design, and the offices of the CEO and chairpersons. Tesla's headquarters uh, in Austin, Texas decide the strategic direction of the company with international operations giving the little autonomy. Now, in this Tesla's headquarters, Austin, Texas, the, these are the function based hierarchy is there and uh, it is a geographical is there as I was mentioning about that is the organizations located internationally and the global and uh, here we find that is it is uh, the function based hierarchy is the geographical location was there. So, in the geographical location for example, United States, China, Norway and the India and other countries here we will find that is the automotive and the energy generation and the storage is there. Now, this function based hierarchy which is creating uh, on the basis of uh, the automotive and the energy generation and the storage is there. Similarly, we find that is the uh, in the organization structure uh, when we are talking about the multinational global organizations, then there will be the like the Asian head is there that is the one example and therefore, other countries for other countries also there will be the different managers are there. Now, we will talk about the uh, J Galbraith the star model is there. Now, here it is influencing the employee behavior through a series of design policies and controllable by the management is there. Now, he, we find that is the it, it, it is the strategy is there. So, first and foremost will be the organizational strategy. This strategy includes the vision, vision of that particular organization is there. For example, uh, we have taken that uh, Purifel's uh, example and therefore, in that case we find it, it, it was the vision vision was to do the business uh, and it is a stateless place, right. Therefore, in that case uh, are boundaryless organizations you can say. So, therefore, in that case uh, this vision, vision is very important that is uh, this organization wants to go for this particular uh, 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 going to be the multinational or global or not. Similarly, nowadays we are talking about the e-governance. So, the governance method is through the 
technology and therefore, when you are having the strong uh, support of the IT and information technology, uh, information technology, then in, in that case you will find that is the your e-governance uh, is becoming very, very uh, easy and therefore, uh, now uh, even though your organization is placed at the different places, uh, but uh, they will be getting into this uh, uh, the uh, 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 control by, by, by the centralized system also. So, therefore, there is no, no restriction or limitation and it is how to make the governance uh, when, when the organizations are placed into the different countries. Uh, uh, as I, we have talked about for example, the labor cost, so that is the comparative advantage is there. So, you will like to do the business or the companies will like to go for the business uh, where, where this uh, all these the comparative advantages are there maybe for the uh, labor cost is there, production cost is there and uh, here we will find that is uh, it is uh, has been uh, uh, the uh, advantages uh, for the organization. Then the structure is there, there is power and authority, information flow and the organizational roles are there which we have talked into the these organization structures are there and this we will be discussing into the details also. Now, the business process and the lateral links are there where we talk about the network processes uh, naturally the, the people. Uh, of the uh, organization and th all those employees and they are re required to be interconnected and these networks processes and the teams that will be giving an integrative roles are there and as a result of which uh, you will create a matrix structure and then on basis of that matrix structure uh, you will be getting the business processes and the lateral links are there. Now, when people are leaving the, uh, their hometown and then they are going for the other places within the country or outside the countries, we know that is the compensation and the rewards uh, that becomes a very, very important uh, uh, factor. And therefore, here when we are talking about uh, uh, these uh, international or the global organization, then in that case uh, the reward system that will be the very highly motivating factor for employees to work uh, uh, across the borders. Now, in the HR management is uh, for uh, now the right talent, right people uh, that is required uh, for these uh, recruitment is there. If the right people are not recruited, then the performance will not be there. So, therefore, in that case it is the hiring is becoming a very, very crucial aspect uh, and these work feedback and the learning that is uh, that means uh, the your HR management that will be having the very high challenge. Now, we will go into the details. Uh, for example, uh, as I talked about that is the strategy is about the objective values and mission, the basic direction of the company is there. So, that, that will give the directions to the uh, in which directions short term uh, strategies, long term strategies will be uh, designed by the organization and on basis of that uh, the organization will move. So, it is establishes the criteria for choosing among the alternative organizational forms uh, to enable the strategies whether you want to be only domestic, multinational or global to choose the relative importance of activities are there. <coughs> the structure, the structure determines where the power and authority in the organization based on the analysis in four areas specialization, shape, distribution and departmentalization. When we talk about the specialization refers to the job specialties uh, that is uh, required uh, in the people in the uh, to perform the work is there. Now, the shape describes the number of people in the organization uh, units are the span of control at each level is there. Distribution of power can be here vertical determining the flow flat uh, or the hierarchy of the organization is. It can also be lateral referring to the movement of power to a department dealing with the critical issues. Departmentalization is the formation of organization units on the dimensions of functions, workflow processes, markets, customers and the geography is there. So, processes are the flow of information and decision processes across the organizational structure and vertical processes allocate the funds and talent while the horizontal lateral processes are the workflow as there. So, rewards align these employees goals to organizational goals to do so they must align with the other design components. People refer to the aligning the human resource policies and functions to develop both people and the organizational capabilities are there. Now, 
when we are talking about the holonic enterprise model. So, in holonic enterprise model, we find out that is the enterprise is uh, uh, here, the structure is there, and it is about the different resources which are managed in the enterprise. So, whole the holonic model serves global virtual organizations by allowing self directed information and resource management linked through the internet. The, the holonic enterprise operates on the three levels uh, dynamic virtual clusters, uh, execution con control control execution and the execution is there. So, here we will find infrastructure is there uh, that is the EC and uh, that is the execution control is there that is about the resources are there. Now, this is the organization which are having these uh, operates uh, on these different uh, these three factors of the execution control, control execution and the executions are there. The global enterprise collaborative level is there in the enterprise meaning of the world companies enter a collaborative hierarchy to produce the products or services. We have traditionally re regarded uh, uh, this as a supply chain moving from the customer to the producer as there. However, when we regard the customer uh, construct as a holistic enterprise, we see that the each holon seeks to the optimize the efficiency. It operates as an independent entity in collaboration with the extended enterprises there. A customer in the chain seeks to work with the most efficient and the responsive supplier. Uh, the supplier aims to sell to, uh, to the most profitable customer is there. And the result in an organization of the whole collaborative, it is the inter enterprise is there. When we talk about the intra enterprise level, the each enterprise in the uh, holocracy must organize uh, its uh, internal resources to deliver according to the, uh, the coordination requirements of the collaborative cluster. Uh, this organization requires planning and the dynamic scheduling of the resources uh, including uh, this uh, functionality configuration is there. A failure such as the machine downtime that requires uh, a reclustering of the enterprise resources uh, and that uh, we have seen into the task distribution uh, uh, patterns are there. And uh, uh, in the task distribution pattern when we are talking about uh, that each enterprise is having the different structure. The machine physical agent level is there and the third level managers uh, the distributed control of the machines and that performs the work. Now, the distribution is done uh, through these uh, agile manufacturing using self uh, reconfiguring intelligent distributed automation elements are there. The flexible organization model uh, that is having the, uh, the protect the core and the disrupt at the edge is there and the find discrete uh, areas the edge that requires the agility and disrupt them using on their incubation model separate from the core organizations. And the unleash the network teams are there and create the cross functional autonomous teams uh, organized by the specific outcomes. And these teams will require a new type of leadership uh, with the coaching and development skills and expertise in the team dynamics are there. When we talk about the adopt a collaborative system mindset, uh, then they give up your organizational charts with their boxes and lines. A network of teams requires a holistic understanding of the connections points are there and not the lines. So, of course, authority. A soil function will have little use, instead use connection points. Uh, uh, then to unlock the power of the social dynamics are there. So, here in this structure you find it is not into the hierarchy rather than the points are connected and therefore, a collaborative system is developed uh, uh, where you are giving up this uh, organizational chart is uh, uh, in spite of the hierarchy. So, create the conditions for a flexible organization. So, here develop a common purpose uh, that will become the glue that holds uh, your team together through a shared culture. So, it will require a new leaders uh, uh, who are not commanders, controllers or the directors, but this, uh, the stimulators of the collaboration and the teamwork is there. The global organization structure provides a platform for the larger companies that can perform well by following a particular organization structure and this could differ for the smaller organizations so, and uh, the structure should be chosen accordingly. The upper division and the staff are responsible for taking on the projects and accepting the projects that might be profitable uh, for the company. The department in the lower division might be responsible uh, uh, for the suggestions, uh, the strategy that could be used in the any particular functions. The department below it uses the strategies and the performs to give out the, the best results from the organization and a flat organization structure works best for the small businesses. 
Small and newly established businesses need the fast functioning and the better communication with the customers or clients. Following the same organizational structure as the top organizations can prove costly for small organizations, hence the flat structure is best for the such organizations. To make quick decisions and the complete the projects faster in time, the flat structure is best for the small business organizations are there. The global organization structures uh, that provides an organization structure and structure system and that the organizations can follow. So, following a proper and well prepared structure increases the communication between the companies and the consumers and that helps in the organization's fast functioning. Furthermore, when followed precisely, a chain of command increases work efficiently and reduces the scope of uh, error. Therefore, it is important to follow an organized structure and the departments hand out the task to the correct individual and an organization structure thus the work output is precise and efficient. Uh, when given to these uh, the concerned individuals, uh, the work is performed well and the duplication could be avoided in the work productions are the properly followed. So, therefore, these organization structures that is making you the more optional and it depends on the different factors. This is the case study, the Colgate Palmolive company. Please go through this particular case study and then you will understand that is the how this uh, business development which is in communication where the products and team leaders, uh, many of them which have been the former country managers, uh, then they have worked uh, on this particular. And uh, these uh, over uh, here, the role of uh, the organizing the business that you will understand domestically and across the border is there. Now, this is the research paper which is talking about the organizational learning and the organizational design is there. Dear friends, nowadays uh, it, it is very necessary that is the uh, organizational learning is required to be a continuous process uh, and that culture is to be developed uh, into the organization. So, the purpose of this paper is to explore a new idea uh, presenting the possible relationship between the organizational learning and the organizational design is there. Now, uh, the finding of this paper is Organizational learning theory has been used to understand several organizational phenomena like the resources and competencies, tacit knowledge or the role memory in the organization. However, it is difficult to identify fits and consequent misfits between the organizational learning and the organizational design is there. Here, the, this paper is having these uh, practical implications. Uh, what I would like to say that is the it is possible to design your organization so that uh, you can go for uh, the organizational learning which is a necessity of the day. This is the another paper that is the organization design perspective in the project based organization a structured review is there. The purpose of this paper is to use an organizational design perspective to determine the scope of the state of the art of the research into the project based organizations are there. And here you will find that is the how interdependencies is there among the different elements uh, of the organizations are there. And uh, this paper will be help, uh, helpful you to understand the project based organizations and the, their designs, uh, how if the designs are required, use the develop framework on the management discussions are there. Uh, this is the book uh, that is the uh, network uh, uh, scaled and the agile is there. And this book uh, authors are the Amy Katz, Greg Kessler, Michael uh, D. Martino and the Julius Reed is there. And this is talking about a design strategy for the complex organizations. While technology and geopolitical forces, uh, they are changing the face of the business today, the pattern and challenges of the organization humans to work together across the organization culture, language and time zone boundaries they remain, which we have talked in the beginning. That is the how these particular aspects, uh, and they, they are working on this, uh, um, these across the boundaries are there. So, naturally this language, cultures and organizations need to be agile network and scalable. Network scaled and agile reveals how to shape organizations that will enable people to make the fast and better decisions uh, in a more complex world. By outing this tension between the need for the agility, differentiation, scale integration, the book offers a new way to think about this debate using the models of the tower vertical integration and the square horizontal integration. It addresses the role of the leadership team and how the organization design process can build the C-suite leaders and successors. Each chapter concludes with a series of reflection questions uh, uh, that for leaders as well as the summary of key concepts and the tips are there.
and these are the references uh, which you can refer uh, for your further studies and understand that is the how we can go by these the different types of the organizations whether so domestic is there, uh, international is there, multinational is there or the global is there and uh, these organizations uh, uh, where, how we can go for uh, these uh, designing of the organization and uh, making this organization more effective. These are the further references uh, which you can refer for your uh, readings uh, so that you can get uh, detailed in depth knowledge about uh, this organization, uh, these uh, types of organizations ac across the boundaries and uh, how to make the uh, more and more the managerial effectiveness. Thank you.